Okay, so we are going to learn how to calculate the data for um, the Gatorade experiment. So it's um, spectrophotometric determination of a food dye, which is just a red dye in Gatorade um, drink, okay? So this is the recorded data. So this is something um, what you would see when you do an experiment. Um, I based this data off the video that we uh, you probably saw, but obviously these parts were missing. So um, these are just the data from the video of demo, okay? This is not the data that you will be using for your lab. Your data that you need comes from a different file um, from the student dry lab data Excel file. If you look for the recorded data um, for the food dye spectro uh, spectrophotometry um, determination of food dye lab, and you will see a tab that will have all these values. There are different numbers that will be provided for you. But I just wanted to show you guys how we can calculate this based on a different set of numbers so you can have a guide on how to work it out. So let's take a look here. This is the path length of the cuvette, molarity of the um, stock of the red dye solution. Um, you will have a different number for this uh, in your dry lab data. You have different numbers over here as well. Um, this absorbance of the stock basically is too concentrated. It's out of range. We can't use this. So you dilute a certain num uh, value. Um, in your dry lab data, this will be a different value, so your dilution is actually going to be different, and this number is also different. Okay, so please make sure to not use this number um, that's given in this video, but it's a good guideline on how to do things. So what we need to do is basically use these absorbances. Um, somehow, we're going to use this absorbance, and we're going to use it to calculate. The, uh, what we're looking for is actually molarity of your Gatorade the red dye in your Gatorade, that's the final thing that we're looking for, okay? So first things first is we have to figure out how we can calculate the molarity of um, the solutions here. So these are calculated values. I'm gonna show you how we get these values here. So what we are going to need is the fact that we know that um, this uh, dilution is one mil into 250 mil. So they take this one mil here, they put it into a 250 mil flask, I'm going to take 5 mils of the red dye, they put it in 250 mil flask. They take 10 mils, put it in 250. 15 mils, put it in 250. And we know the original concentration, um, this is molarity of original, volume of original is 1 mil, and then the new volume is 250 mils. And we can find the new molarity using the formula M1V1 equals to M2V2. Okay, so if we set it up here, um, go ahead and change the view here. Um, we're gonna take a look here, I wrote it out. So fast one, we have one mil of the original, one mil of the original, um, put it into 250 mil, and we need to find the new molarity. So we use M1V1 equals to M2V2, where we calculate M2 will equals to M1 times V1 over V2. So M1 is a molarity that's given in your recorded data um, as your molarity of your stock red dye. You put this value in times your um, volume of one, first original volume, one mil divided by V2, which is 250. You get this value here. I'm keeping three sig figs here because I have three sig figs as my smaller number. So M2 is there for 3.79 times 10 to the minus six molarity. Now, once I find this, I can actually write this over here on this first line, 3.79 times 10 to the minus six, okay? And then you keep going, you do it for the se uh, second flask, which is five mils into 250 mils, so V1, V2, this is original molarity, find a new molarity. So here's the new number. Again, I have three sig figs because I have three sig figs here. Um, that is 1.90 times 10 to the minus five molarity. And that goes over here in this box, okay? Now, if you keep going here, we'll see here, this is 10 mils, okay? Um, into 250 mils, and you still use the same original stock of allure rate of molarity. You put it in your calculations here. This time we'll keep four sig figs is 3.7904 times 10 to the minus five. So it's really 3.790 times 10 to the minus five. So I go ahead and write that number onto the molarity of the 10 mil solution, 10 mil of standard solution right here, okay? And uh, you get the same number over here for the fourth one with 15 mils. So over here you have M1, V1, M2 is what we're looking for, V2 is 250 mils. You plug it in here, you can solve for 
and two, and then that goes, uh, I have four sig figs here, keep four sig figs, put it in here. Now, once you get to this point, you have to take a break and you have to get out your Excel file. Um, you'll be graphing, so um, you'll have to pause this for a second to see how you get the graph. Um, basically, you'll have to watch the other video that's going to be in this folder that tells you how to graph absorbance versus molarity. Okay, so what you'll do is you'll take this here. This is molarity. Molarity will be your x axis. Okay, and then you'll take these four numbers up here as your absorbance, this will be on your y-axis. So you'll put in your numbers over here into your file, okay? So when you show it into an Excel file, this is the result of my data. The molarity, so if you notice, my four numbers over here are translated over here. Okay, so you don't have to type times 10 to the power minus 6, you just type 3.79e negative six. That's all you got to type and it will show up. This will be shown on the video, okay? So you put this in here and you type your absorbance on the y-axis. You really didn't have to type all this. I just like to make it look a little pretty. As long as you have your four numbers on this side, the other four numbers on that side next to it, okay? And then you select it, you make a graph, you make the equation appear, and then you get this equation right here. So what in the world does this equation mean? This equation means that y is absorbance and x here is molarity, okay? So if I already plotted these four here and I know my unknown was 0.35, if you take a look, it says unknown was 0.35. So unknown was like, you know, 0.35, so it's gonna be like somewhere around here and we can kind of figure out what the molarity will be. The best way is, you know, if you look at the graph, you can quite tell it's somewhere around here, but. If you plugged in your absorbance 0.35 here, you saw for your x, your x is going to be the molarity of that flask of your unknown solution, okay? So you take this equation from your graph, okay? And then you're gonna write it out. So basically the first four set of numbers here is gonna help you make this graph. Once you have this graph equation, we will move to fi figure out the Gatorade part, okay? So this is a lure red. You find the equation, so let me switch the page over. The next page over here has to do with the unknown. So the diluted unknown in my case here was 25 to 250, and I'm actually looking for both M2 and M1. The first thing is I have to dilute it because I put that into the data and I got 0.35 as my absorbance. So how do I tell that? Um, it's because it's right here. I put 25 and 250 and then I got 0.35. So basically, your 0.35 goes over here. So whatever the value of your um, absorbance for your diluted unknown here, your Gatorade, this value will go into the Y of your equation, okay? And remember this equation I got from the Excel file, and I will show you guys how to graph it on a separate um, video. So you can always take a break, watch that video, and come back to this part. Once you have the equation, everyone is on uh, your equation will be different than mine. You put your absorbance here, and then we will solve for x because x here will be m2. Okay? Why m2 and not m1? Because we're we, we, we were looking at the diluted version. The concentrate on was too difficult. We couldn't work with it because it was out of range for our graph. So once I figure out what the x is, I solved it using algebra. Um, basically, x is basically 0 0.35 minus 0 0.029 divided by this number here, and I get 2.1 times 10 to the minus 5. That's m2 right there. Okay, and then I go backtrack to m1v1 equals m2v2, where m1 equals m2v2 over v1. So m m2 goes here, v2 is 250, right? So m2, I guess I'll go ahead and fill this in now. This is now, ooh, pen's not working. 2.1 times 10 to the minus 5, okay? And that goes over here, times 250 divided by 25, so that means my original M1 is 2.1 times 10 to the minus 4. So when you have this, so basically I'll have to fill up the rest of this table here. Um, my equation that split line is 1, y equals 1, 6, 6, 6, 2, x plus 0 0.0029. Uh, the diluted one is M2, which I found was um, 2.1 
times 10 to the minus 5 molarity. And the molarity of the Gatorade that's original, it was 2.1 times 10 to the minus 4 molarity. So that's how we will solve this in um, lab calculations here. There's a lot of steps, but remember, um, first you have to use the first four numbers, use M1V1, M2V2, to calculate all the molarities, okay? We'll put the molarities over here, and then take the molarity and the absorbance, we'll make a graph, and that graph goes over here. You find the equation. And then you'll put the equation over here, and then we go to the following, the next page here, uh, where we show you how we can plug in the absorbance of your, of your first set here, unknown right here. And then you get your M2, and then we can solve for M1. Right? I hope it helps you remember to watch the other video to, um, to graph your Excel file.